Good morning. Good to be back home. Home from home. Hallelujah. You guys are looking so great and so awesome. I bring greetings from my wife and my family and from the church. Uh, guys, I just want to let you know that we are living in the right time. Man, it can never be any better time to be alive. This is the season we are going to see the glory of God, the power of God, the presence of God. You know what? I thank God for what Paul, Peter, Chasfini, what they experience. I thank God for them. But listen to me. There is nothing to compare with the glory of the now. This is the right time. And we are going to see more of God's power. Pastor, I'm so excited. Yes. You are going to see the reason why I'm excited very soon. <laughs> but before then, this morning, I want to share with you one of those burdens, you know, that you carry, and it is so overwhelming, and you need people to carry it with you. A ministry is doing fantastic work in West Africa, in Nigeria, in Wari. We are reaching more souls, digging wells, loving on people, and see God's miraculous power, healing, deliverance. But there is one thing that the Lord has laid in my heart, and that is going out of your comfort zone and reaching the unreached. And that has been a burden. And so this morning, before I bring the word, I just want to share with you a little slide or video that for you to see some of the things that God is doing. Reaching out to the remote poor people. As I'm talking to you right now, our nation, Nigeria, is almost at the brink of uh, becoming a first state because of the government that we have Right now, we had our election, February, and we had new government, but it is so bad. A gallon of fuel right now is about $3 or $4. No food, no job, and the whole thing is collapsing. And I wonder if we in the city are suffering, I wonder how those in the village. And that is my passion. I want to take you along. I want you to be part of this passion. Let me just take a moment and watch that quickly, and then I will come and bring the word.
Thank you. We do this once in a year, and this year is so special. It was a mandate on me right now that because of the situation in my country, several of my church members, they are out of job. Uh, their children are out of school. And so December 17, we are going to do this in our church. We will provide food, clothes, resources to meet the need of our member. We don't do that. We have never done that. But seeing the need and seeing the pain, we are forced to do something. The preaching of the gospel is not just standing behind the pulpit, but touching the life of people. And we really not only just to speak spiritual thing, we also want to give them physical thing. And that is on the 17th. And the following week, and we'll be going to one of the most remote village in our state. We're going to travel for hours through the jungles. And we're going to go there with doctors, with food, with medication, anything that we can lay our hands to go to serve people. You know, Jesus never died for only the city people. There's somebody out there in the village that need the love of Jesus, that need the hands of Jesus, that need the care of Jesus. And I want to call on you this morning to be part of that journey. Journey with us to reach these unreached people. You have been a blessing to us. Your gift has enabled us to dig some of those where you saw, feed some of the people out there. I tell you that I've been coming to the state. I've never seen a church like Oasis that have been that has a large heart for the kingdom work. I want to thank Pastor Ladin and his wife and the elders in this church and the entire family in this church. My friend, this is not just a religious gathering. This is a family of Jesus. We are one. We all stand shoulder to shoulder. Your need is my need. My joy is your joy. Your pain is my pain. And so together, we'll take the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth. Once again, thank you so much for being there. Thank you for praying for us. Our nation needs your prayer. There's a lot of kidnapping, a lot of, you know, armed robbery. You know, there, there is a man, a friend of ours that lives very close to us. Two weeks, I'm mean, sorry, two months ago, he just escorted his friend out, and he never came back until now. He was kidnapped, leaving his children and his wife. One of my members was shot, but thank God that he escaped with bullet wound, never died. So I really want you to pray for us. It is not easy. It is difficult. It is hard. Somebody once told me, I said, Chris, you have all this opportunity to travel to this day. Why not relocate your family? I looked at the person and said, well, listen, I'm not moving until God moves me. I'm going to be where God plants me, and I'm going to flourish there. And I have friends that are watering me and helping me to be more flourished. And so, brethren, it is high time. We need to be more serious with the Lord. I call on you to be part of what God is doing in Africa. Pray for us. Pray for our family. Pray for our children. Pray for our members. It is not easy. When your wife goes out, you have to be praying, God, please bring her back safely. It's as serious as that. You know. So please, we covet your prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, I know, I know. And everything that was said from this altar this morning brought a confirmation to my spirit. The Lord was speaking to me, before I bring the word, the Lord was speaking to me, whatever we are seeing right now, the wave, the move, is a preparation. The real thing has not come. We are just preparing ourselves to get into the real deal. You remember the story of Elijah 
when there was a bastard and Elijah came in and did what the first thing he did was to repair the altar, to prepare the altar for the fire to fall. God is preparing the church. God is preparing our heart for the fire to fall. We thank God for the move we are seeing. We thank God for the, the healing, the deliverance, salvation that we are seeing. But the best is yet to come. I want you to prepare your heart. The days of being religious is over. You either get in or get out. You either roll your sleeve and get ready to move with God. You know, God is not short of power. God is short of people. The Bible said, I sought for a man. God is looking for. Can you imagine the creator of everything looking down? Can I find one? Can I get one? May you be that man. May you be that woman that is going to stand shoulder to shoulder for the move of God in this last day. I believe that God is bringing us to a moment where the heavens of the heavens are going to be zipped open and there's going to be outpouring. Do we have containers in the house? Do we have vessels in the house? Do we have hungry people in the house? My, my. Jesus, you are so awesome. Turn with me, if you can, please. To the book of Acts of Apostle. Jesus, caribou, you will see that. Is that okay, Pastor? <laughs> Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. It reads, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the time of the restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world has begun. Father, I pray that you speak to us in the language that we will understand this morning. Father, I may have accent, but the Holy Spirit does not have accent. Take every word and minister to every heart that is present here. And let everyone that is present in this place, feel in the presence of God and the touch of God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I believe from the depth of my heart that God is preparing to do a great work. And we are privileged to be part of what God is doing. There are people that may be better than us, greater than us, more intellectual than us, have everything, but it pleases him to have chosen us. It is a privilege to be partner with God. It is a great honor to stand to be used of God. And so I believe in, th in this day and time and hour, God is preparing to do a greater work. In these end times, and we need to get ready, and we need to get our heart, because he's about to pour his spirit in a new way. He's about to bring a river of revival in a special way. You know, I remember the days of Jesus Christ. The Bible recorded in the book of John chapter 5 that there was in a particular pool where the angel of the Lord will come and stare once in a year. And the Bible said when the sick step into it, they are healed. But listen, the Bible said there was a man that has been in that condition for 38 years, even before Jesus was born physically. But he knows about him. And the Bible said there was a feast in Jerusalem. 
And Jesus said, hey, my disciple, you guys go to the feast. There is a man that needs a revival. There was a water that is being shared once in a year, but the water of life is Jesus Christ. And he came and changed the condition of that man. I believe it doesn't matter how long Wisconsin, Chippewa, uh, how do you call it? Shippo, Shippo, Shippo Fall. Shippo Fall has been in darkness. I believe that this is our hour. This is our time. We have prayed. We have sought his face. It is time. It is time. It is time. The man waited for 38 years. Nobody knew about him, but the Lord knows about him. And Jesus came visiting. God is about to visit this valley. And from this valley, we are going to transport revival into the different counties, into the interior, into the city. We are going to transport revival from this house. The problem we have is that many are unaware of the power of God that is available at our disposal. And therefore, we live in denial and in darkness. But ladies and gentlemen, God is about to break a veil. It's about to take away the veil. Yeah. About to open your eyes and our eyes, the eyes of our understanding that we might see and understand the depth and the width of the love of God. Am I talking to somebody this morning? It is time for the church to wake up. We are entering a special season. When I came this morning, I saw some of the members that have been part of this church for many years, you know, and I've been coming to this place for years. And when I see them and saw that they are still committed to the plan of God, those are the people that have prayed, sought the face of God. Like our pastor that stood here this morning that was testifying, there are men and women that have shed tears, crying and calling on the name of the Lord, when will you visit us? When will you turn the situation in this valley around? Ladies and gentlemen, we are just stepping into what others have labored for. It is our time. The harvest is ripe. The glory of God is hovering, waiting for us to open our heart. And so, Lord, fill us. The waitings are over. Heaven can no longer contain. Paul said, listen what, what Peter said, repent therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out so the times of refreshing may come from the presence of God. I would like to title this message this morning, it is time for greater move. It is time for greater move. Peter was with Jesus. He saw the miraculous. He saw the power of God. With Jesus, healing and deliverance. Peter was in the upper room in Acts 2. He tasted the Pentecostal power. But yet Peter said, there is a time of refreshing that is greater than what I have tasted that is coming. I thank God for things that we have read, but ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to begin to believe God for the greater move of his power, of his presence. This is no more time for status quo. It's no more time of sitting back and laying back. It is time to run with the Lord. It is time to move with the Lord. It is time to say, God, we are ready. The Bible said the hands of the Lord is not short. No, his ear is deaf. God is waiting for us. Whether you are old in age, 
whether you are young, one thing I want to announce to those of our brothers and sisters that are up there in age, listen to me, there is no retirement in the kingdom of God. You get to square your shoulder and get ready to fire up. He said in the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, in the last day, I will pour. Today, we that people say with the anointing, God is waiting to pour. And when I pour my spirit upon the people, the young, the old, will line up to my will. We are going to see things as never before. When our brother was sharing this morning, I said, wow, what a revelation. The Bible said the young just see vision. God is about to pour his spirit in this church. It is not going to be only about the pastor and the elders. My friend, we are going to be carrier of the anointing. Whether we are out there in Walmart, something is moving inside of us. Whether we are out there, how do you call it? Target, Best Buy. You know, I came from Milwaukee. They took me out to Wood, wood what's it called? Woodman's. Or man's. I said, wow, <laughs> what a city mall. That is an entire city in my, in, in my country. But ladies and gentlemen, just as you see all those things shared in the store, my friend, God is about to decorate his church with anointing, with the presence of God. Wherever we go, doors will be opened. The Bible said we are going to infiltrate the kingdom of darkness and we are going to snatch soul from the kingdom of darkness and we are going to depopulate hell to populate heaven. Come on, guys, let's get ready. Now, what he said, there's power in prayer. One of the things I want to plead with you all this morning is that God wants us to identify our gifting and calling. And one thing that is missing in the church today is that calling into intercession. We need intercessor, intercessor, bet miracle, bet the presence of God. We need people that will spend time in the closet, men that will labor. Out of labor come the betting of a child. Not until we travel, not travel. Did you hear me? Until we travel, not travel. The Bible said as soon as Zion travailed, Zion brought forth. May the Lord raise intercessors in this place. May God raise men that will be burdened with the burden of revival, the burden of the presence of God. Men that will begin to bombard the kingdom of heaven and say, Oh God, revive us with your presence. We don't just only want to come to the church and just feel the goodies. It is good, but we need men. That was said, enough is never enough. I need more. We need more. If 10 people are getting saved every Sunday, what about 20 getting saved? If we are running two services, what about running four services? If we are seeing 10 people being healed, what about 40 being healed? The Bible said, with God, all things are possible. Yeah. But we need to bet this. We need to bet the atmosphere. Yeah. Peter said, there's a refreshing coming. It's coming. But what must we do for this? Number one, we must believe that there is more. We must believe that whatever we have experienced this Sunday, there is more for more next Sunday. There is more tomorrow. There is more next tomorrow. There is more in my home. We must believe that there is more. The Bible said in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12, 
that greater work than this shall we do. Greater work. That means that all the great things that Jesus did, there is still more to be done. There is greater work to be done. We have to experience the presence of God in a different way. Joel chapter 2 verse 20 says, In the last day, God will pour out his spirit upon how many people? All. All flesh. Listen, I don't know. Maybe it's my Africa, Nigeria, English, and understanding. Hmm. He says all. All. Help me. Maybe I'm thinking different. All. What does all mean? And what does all include? Including you. God wants to pour his spirit upon all flesh. If the spirit is not poured on you yet, so Lord, what about me? Don't say, it's okay, pastor, we pray for me. Start thinking, who am I going to pray for? God, bring somebody into my life so that I can pray for. You have saved me so that I can be a contact point to save somebody else. Come on, say somebody, tell somebody's talking about you. Yes, amen. In the book of Hagar, Hagar chapter 2, verse 9, the Old Testament prophet tells us that the glory of the latter will be greater than the glory of the former. What does that mean? The glory that we're expecting is greater than what Peter experienced. Times of refreshing is coming, and it is coming from the presence of the Lord. He can't wait to refresh you. This morning I came in, I ministered in, in, in um, one of the churches, Spanish church. I came in, I rushed in. I was there praising God. Oh my God, I was feeling so thirsty. My, my mouth was dry, my throat was, I looked around if there was no water. I said, well, let me just endure that after the service I will drink. I could not control my thirst. I turned around and said, please, can I get water? My friend, I prayed that there would be so much hunger that we said, Lord, can you give me water to drink? Can you, can you give me water of your presence? I can't wait till tomorrow. I can't wait till next year. I need it now. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. <laughs> yes, we read the story of the um, healing tents in those days. My friend... Today, this hour, there's going to be healing homes. Your home is going to be a place of healing. Wherever we go, we carry the anointing. It's not left in the church. It goes with us. Because this glory resides in the vessel. And we are the vessel. The Bible said in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that the eyes have not seen, nor ear heard what God has prepared. It's not preparing it now. It has already been prepared. And it's waiting for us to, be, to come and eat, to come and receive. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, God is able, Jesus is able to do. He's always able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above what we can ask or think. Whew. That is something. He's a great God. And there is no limit to what he can do. He has everything under his control. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul said... I want more. I have not attained what I was called to. Can you imagine Paul, a man who wrote, I think, one third or two third of the New Testament, a man who planted so many churches, a man that saw miracle and stood before kings, yet he said, I have not arrived. There is still more. And if Paul can say that, what about me? What have I done for me to say, well, I've tried? No, 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 no. 
God is about to do great things. And God is looking for the heart of men who will be, believe that there is more. Enough is never enough. There is still more. Number two, we must hunger for more of God. There must be that desperation. There must be that hunger. Lord, revive us. The reason why many churches, we have big churches. The reason why we don't have revival in the big churches out there today is because they are okay with their situation. They're okay with their facility. They're okay with all the, everything they have. But my friend, there is nothing to substitute the presence of God. The presence of God, if it's, yes. I say this to my people. If the presence of God is not in the church, there is no difference between that gathering and a social club. It is the presence of God in the church that makes the church the church. And that separates the church from the world. So we must hunger for more. We must desire for more of God. The people of God must hunger. I remember the story of Elijah. Elijah in 2 Kings, 2 Kings 2. Elijah was just a servant of Elijah, Elisha, the servant of Elijah. Now listen to me. Elijah was running the school of prophets. Is that right? He had a college of prophets. Guess what? The sons of prophets in the college were never hungry for the presence of God. They were okay with the status quo. But there was a man called Elisha that was never satisfied. He was hungry. He needed more. And so when God was to take Elijah, he told Elijah, you stay here and God is leading me there. And God, Elijah said, if God is taking you there, I want to be where you are there. I don't want to be in a comfort zone. I'm going to be there with you. And when he got there, the sons of prophets said, hey, do you know God is taking your, your master from you? He said, come on, keep quiet. I'm not after the religion. I'm not after the party. I'm after his presence. And Elijah said, stay here. No, I'm not staying. I'm going with you. Stay here. I'm not going with you. When he came to River Jordan, he said, you see, there's no boat. I'm going to cross it. And you don't have any chance coming back. You better stay here. No, 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 no. If you cross, I'm crossing with you. Whatever that crosses you will cross me back. And so they cross. And then when they left, Elijah said, hmm. Now ask me, what do you want? What did Elisha said? Oh, I need anointing. Is that what he said? And want something that is greater than what you are carrying. Do you think that he made it up there? Did he make it up right there? No, no, no. That has been his desire. That has been something in him. If my master is doing this, Lord, I want to do more. If my pastor is doing this, I want to do more. If my deacon or elder is doing this, I want to do more. And guess what, what happened? And Elijah said, if you can see me, it is yours. And he did. He received it. And when he came back, he took the man to where is the God of Elijah? No, no, don't ask me. I'm already here with you. And he parted and he crossed. The first miracle. The Bible said the sons of the prophet that were so dignified, they came to him and said, now we know the presence of God. See, when the presence of God is upon you, people that looked down on you, that commonize you, that says you are nothing, they will come looking up to you. Because you, ha you have something that they need. You have something that will change your life. Church, please listen to me. Get on board. Get on board. It is our season. It is our time. If you missed it, you will live for the rest of your life regretting. The first thing, you must realize that there is more to what you already have. Number two, we must hunger for his presence. Mm.
The Bible says Moses, in the book of Exodus chapter 33, God said, I'm going to send my angel to go with you. Moses said, no, I appreciate the angel, but we need your presence. It is your presence that separates us from the rest of the world. My friend, don't settle for angel. We thank God for the work of the angels, but the presence of God attracts the manifestation of the angels. When you carry the presence of God, the angels will be at your service. They are there because the presence, not because of who you are, but because of who you carry. Are you listening to me this morning? And God said, okay, I will go with you. You know what? I love what Moses said. Moses, I've seen the presence of God. I've seen the glory of God. But yet Moses said, oh, Lord, show me your glory. That, is, that should be our prayers. Thank God for the testimony of you yesterday. God, show me your glory. God, show me your presence. God, I need you. And the Bible said, God said, okay, I will put you in a cliff, and I will put my hand, and I will show you my back. Well, that was the Old Testament, but the, the New Testament, the Lord has removed the curtain. Now we can see him. We can behold him. We can see the goodness of his presence. My friend, let's hunger for more of him. Finally, the last point is that we must make room. We must make room. I love, I think you are the one that says something or who's the one, somebody says something that, you know, we are, we, we are so saturated with so much thing that we stuff, that we don't have room for more stuff. You know, when you need to bring more stuff inside, you have to remove some of the old stuff. You know, there are stuff that we have stuffed in. And for the new thing to come, we have to, Remove some of the old stuff, some of ideas, mindset, you know, the, the, the way of our belief. We have to remove it and make room. We need to make room. I want to give you a story, and I'm going to close with that. A story in the Bible. And that story is found in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 2, verse, or verses 1 to 12. I'm not going to read it. You can read it on your own. It is the story of Jesus Christ coming into Capernaum. And the Bible says he entered a room. And people heard of his presence. And the whole room was filled up. And that is what God is doing in Oasis. Because of the presence of God, God is bringing people. When we drove in this morning, my chauffeur said, told me, say, Pastor, this is hunting season, hunting season. A lot of guys will be out there hunting. But when we came into the parking lot, I said, my God, there are hungry people here. Some sacrifice, they are, they are hunting, and they are here. And my friend, that is what God is looking for. And that is why his presence will come, because when you place demand, there is a supply. When you place demand on the presence of God, the anointing, God is not short of his presence. He, he pours it out. And so, the room was filled up, everywhere was filled up to capacity. And then there were four men that had a friend of theirs that was paralyzed from the head down to the toe. And they travel for many miles carrying the paralytic on their shoulder. Before, because they travel a long distance before they arrive, the whole place was already filled up. And they say to themselves, there may not be room for us to see Jesus, but we are going to make a room. We are going to make a room Listen, I'm closing with this. I said, Jesus saw them. Heaven saw them. But heaven was also looking at their action. They could have said, oh, guy, friend, sorry, we came too late. Let's go back home. We'll look for other options, other alternatives. 
there is no substitute for the presence of God. If I'm here, I'm here fully. If I need him, I need him all the way. Not halfway, not half full, not half cup. The Bible said the four guys climbed to the top of the roof and started pounding on the tires, pounding, read the Bible. The Bible said, and they made whole. They created enough room for the man to be let down. Let me ask you a question. Was it an easy job? No. I guess they had some bruises in their hands. Because they never, they never went with tools for that job. They were never expecting. But necessity necessitated them to do what is necessary. They pounded. And listen, when they were pounding, for those of you that are constru- into the construction company, when they were pounding, did you think that some debris fell on Jesus' head? Don't you think? Some particles, some things fell on Jesus because Jesus was sitting right in the middle and they, they were able to know that this guy will be sitting in the middle so that he can minister. So let's, let's dig the hole right in the middle because if we dig the hole here, the guys that are here will push us away and we know that Jesus will not push. So they pounded and pounded and some stones and rocks, some dust were falling on Jesus and I can see Peter say, hey, hey, stop. And Jesus said, hey, hey, keep cool. There are some desperate people that need desperate answer. You cannot stop them, my friend. Yes, when we become desperate, heaven becomes desperate also. And the Bible says, they let down the paralytic man. But there were people outside that needed miracle. But they were okay with them standing outside. But those that said standing outside is not enough got his presence. The Bible says, seek his face. Seek him and you shall find him. Knock and it shall be opened unto him. Ask and it shall be given unto him. Don't say it's okay. Well, maybe next time. There may be no next time. This is the time. And Jesus looked at the paralytic man. He was useless. But... He looked up and saw four men that made room for the paralytic man to be in my presence. And he said, because of your faith, son, rise up and go. When you make room for God, God's presence will be in you and around you. And somebody out there paralyzed in their faith, paralyzed in their future and your dream will be touched because of you. I want you to stand up feet. Stand up this morning. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Number one, we must believe that there is more. Number two, we must hunger. Number three, we must make room. In a busy society like ours, we need to make room for prayer. We need to make room for Bible study. We need to make room for fellowship. We need to make room for services. We need to make room for more of him. Hallelujah.